Welcome back to Trendgruppen Design TV. My name is Stefan Nilsson and I'm continuing to be your host throughout these sessions. Today we're going to have a full program of interesting brands and designers and people that we're going to talk to. But I've also been given the opportunity to say a few words about trends because that's my field. And we've been touching on the topic of the pandemic throughout this week. We've talked about architecture, we've talked about design, and even fairs. And pandemic is affecting everything. So where do I see us moving after the pandemic? Well, I see that we're going to change our relationship to nature a lot. You can see how we're basically moving from the inside to the outside. There are reference to, at the early stages of the pandemic, People were monitoring how people were moving around in the cities over with their mobile phones and people were actually leaving the streets to go to parks, forests and woods just to be out in nature. Today we also have a different perspective. We might have to be nature because that's the only place we can socialize. In lockdowns and under the threat of the virus, we're not supposed to socialize or engage with other people except for perhaps out in nature. So yeah, we want to be out in nature also to socialize. You can see how we've also changed from an interior perspective. Earlier stages, we saw how we took nature inside. We brought like large tree trunks and plants and whatever. We brought those things inside. Today, we take ourselves outside, meaning then, of course, that we might be having our office space in the park. And maybe we'll need new architecture, new design for that, because we want to be outdoor much more. There are even talks about having education classes outdoors. Kids are learning better when they're outdoors rather than indoors. So we're going to be seeing much more of how nature is being part of our world. There's even a new terminology for that that talks about the urban expats. We're absolutely fleeing from the cities. We just don't want to be in the cities anymore because it's jammed and there's subways and there's germs and there's pandemic. Everything is bad associated with in the cities. So we're fleeing out to the countryside where we can be closer to nature. And we're kicking off this day by talking to Fiskars, the well-established Finnish design brand who has been mainly known for their home and gardening tools. Now they're doing something completely new. They're doing a new collection together with Finnish fashion and textile designer Maria Korkela. This new collection is inspired by urban and gardening exploration and a bit of streetwear as well. And we're going to talk to Maria about things like materials and sustainability, for instance. Moi moi. Hi, Maria. How are you? Hi, I'm excellent. How are you? I'm good. Uh, it's a very snowy and cold day here in Stockholm. How is Helsinki? Same here. Very, very cold and sunny, which is nice, yeah. though. That's, that's good. Well, we're going to have, uh, sooner or later, we're going to have spring, but not this week, I think. <laughs> I don't imagine, no. <laughs> but speaking about spring uh, and gardening, uh, let's talk about the collection you did together with Fiskars. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got some recognition for this collection already. I mean, already we've seen the pieces in Vogue, for instance. I mean, what's your relationship to gardening? Do you, do you have a garden or do you live in the city? Uh, I live in the city. Um, I do have my plants here at home that I tend to, but no, I don't have a garden, unfortunately. Um, but I did grow up helping my mom in the garden uh, at our home and at our summer house where, where I still do it if I get the chance. Mm. Um, so I'm not completely unfamiliar with it, but I'm no professional gardener. But when we started out with the project, um, I was taken to the Fiskars. Uh, they actually have these test gardens where right beside the factories, basically mm -hmm. where they can go and test new prototypes and and they can harvest their own fruit mm -hmm. and whatever. So we went through the whole process of how, you know, what positions and movements you take while while you're gardening and, and how that should be reflected in the clothing as well. Right, right. You say that this is for both gardening and urban exploring, or at least in the press text. Um, yeah. Where, where, where in the city would you use this? 
Well, I mean, at least here in Helsinki, we have a lot of these kind of city gardens where you can rent, you know, a box and yeah, yeah. you have your little gardens, etc. So, I mean, we we are kind of playing around with this idea that you know you can go and you can do your gardening and, and then you can hit the town, you know, and you don't have to change in between. Nice. Um, and that it's also a versatile garment in that sense. Very nice. Yeah, I love the idea that you can do you know gardening and then go clubbing basically yeah uh, <laughs> well let's talk about uh, materials because i i understand that you work quite intensely with new materials and recycled materials etc can you tell me about that yeah i mean it was nice actually because we were instantly on the same page starting out with this project like myself and fiskars that we want to use materials that are respectful to the environment that they're intended to be used in which is nature essentially um so it was really important for us to kind of start off with the right foot so to speak and use um sustainable and ethical materials which translated into uh organic and recycled materials and we also used um materials where the water repellency finishing is pfc free mm -hmm. and vegan leather for instance mm -hmm. um they weren't necessarily specifically developed for this collection or engineered for this collection but we did spend a lot of time sourcing for the right materials mm -hmm. and also still keeping in mind that um they're of high quality and um aesthetically pleasing of course <laughs> of course of course um so continuing maria where did you find the inspiration for this collection so the idea for the collection came from the immensely rich history of the company itself and the fiskars village and its surroundings and i was looking at the tools that they offer and i find it interesting how you can um clearly see where they came from the tradition and dna but they're also simultaneously uh contemporary and streamlined and almost futuristic even and that's something that i wanted to distill into the clothing as well Speaking of fashion, this new table where by Rashand is somewhat inspired by fashion. So let's see what the designers behind this new table where collection says. Let's meet Fredrik Färg and Emma Marga Blanche. My name is Fredrik Färg. My name is Emma Marga Blanche and we are design studio Färg & Blanche. We work in a border between art and design. And we do mostly möbler, small objects, sculptures, installations. Och porslin. Pli blanc är namnet på vår nya porslinserie för Örstrand. Pli blanc betyder vitt väck på franska. Inspirationen till serien Pli blanc kommer från delvis sömnadsvärlden där vi har tittat på hur man skapar form av platta ytor. Och där vi har använt sömnaden som att skapa väck som, som på något sätt ger den tredimensionella formen. Vi tittade mycket på staty och klassisk konst och se hur konstnärer har arbetat med till exempel marmor och vissa väck och textilja effekter på, med, med sten och hård, hård material. Vår, vår process går egentligen från skiss till att jobba med händerna. Den är ofta ganska fysisk att vi, vi arbetar med olika material så som textil och lera och, och detta går ju vidare till att vi överför till att jobba i dator som senare blir 3D print så att den spänner över ett, ett stort område med material och tekniker. Vi är väldigt stolta av vår samarbete med Röstrand och att få jobba med nästan 300 år gammal företag och få vara del av svensk designhistoria. Att 
göra en klassisk service på det här sättet är jag väldigt stolt över. Kliblan är ett vardagsporslin för festligare tillfällen. Det gör livet mycket vackrare. And now um, I have a very dear guest. Uh, it's going to be Emma Olbers, a friend and designer here in Stockholm. She's mainly known for her sustainable strive to make a better world and make the design scene much better. And she was even awarded Designer of the Year here in Sweden last year. I think it was 2000, 2020, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, um, and Emma, you're not really launching anything, but we invited you here because we want to hear what do you think? Where are your mind? How, where is sustainability going now with all the pandemic things happening out in the world? Big questions. Let's see where, if we can start somewhere. Um, start by Happy Design Week, Emma. Happy Design Week. How yeah. are you? Uh, very good. Yeah. Are you affected by the pandemic? Yes, uh, I guess everyone is. Uh, that's yeah. hard to not be. <laughs> yeah. How has the, I mean, where do we start with all these questions about the sustainable issue? Where is sustainability now when we have the pandemic? Uh, of course, it's more um, focus on the pandemic in media and so on. Uh, I miss some information about that they both stem from the uh, same problem we not taking care of the ecosystems. Hmm. Being a designer, as you are, and when you're starting to do something new, you have like a long list of things you can choose from. Having a sustainable perspective, what, where, where would you start? Um, I always start with the materials and the choice of materials, because materials uh, stands for 50% of the total emission on furniture in a life cycle analysis. And you're quite focused on CO2 emissions, right, aren't you? Yeah. Why? Why is that so important? Uh, because uh, if we want to lower the temperature, uh, the CO2 or the greenhouse gases, it's not only CO2, it's actually six different gases, uh, is the most important okay. to lower them in the atmosphere. Mm. How can design be part of changing the world to be a better sustainable world? I think both that uh, designers are creative and sometimes uh, they could be the ones leading the way or leading the trends and uh, if you do the climate change uh, picture or that new world uh, to illustrate that I think designers are good uh, people to illustrate the new way of living. Fairs are normally quite unsustainable, wouldn't you say? I mean, the, the stands uh, are built with walls and then destructed and thrown yeah. away. And So, do you think this is a better sustainable choice? Uh, in, in CO2 emission, oh, it is. Yeah. But... Um, but in a heart, uh, passion way... It's not. And then maybe uh, uh, when I take the train to Milan, yeah. as I've done the last years, uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, so you took the train? And for every year that goes, someone else uh, comes along on the train. So that opportunity I miss. Yeah. You just wait for me to join you on that yeah. train ride to Milan. <laughs> yes. Maybe next year. Maybe, maybe next, next year. year. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, are fares still important in the design world? I think it's very important. Uh, I think those uh, meetings and uh, it's something that it's hard to describe and you cannot really touch, but it is something there that you miss if you don't have uh, uh, bigger meetings and fairs. And with this, I would like to say thank you for stopping by, uh, Emma Olbers, and I hope to see you soon here in the snowstorms in Stockholm. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, and see you around. See you. Bye. Bye. And that wraps up our first week here at Trendgruppen Design TV. It's been a good week. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Stockholm Design Week, but digitally. I'm sure we're going to see more versions of this in the future. But if you miss us, you can of course always re-watch the episodes at trendgruppendesigntv.com. Here you're also going to find press releases, high resolution images and whatever you need to make your Stockholm Design Week a good week.